Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty but the rest of There's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 22 in my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we initiated a swift war against the Site 1066 override in order to secure some alloys and progress further toward reaching the Galactic Core. The big topic amongst our citizens right now, however, is about the massive raid on Terra from the Vazarin hegemony. Even with our technologies advancing and our fleet power at its height, we were helpless to act when a force of unimaginable magnitude rained fire down on Terra, completely leveling cities and murdering billions of Roman citizens. The planetary shields bore much of the attack, but the fallout remains with bomb craters, ruins, and devastation setting back the economy on Terra, rendering many unemployed. And so the Senate has been debating, how can we deal with such power, and how much stronger could it get? Perhaps we should combine arms and join others in a galactic federation, and maybe use technology to genetically modify ourselves to obtain some sort of advantage. And those are the votes that I put to you guys, and the votes are in. So for should we make a federation, 64% said yes, there is strength in numbers. 36% obviously then said no, it is not necessary. So it looks like we'll be looking to form a federation. Now the federation I was thinking of forming is a hegemony. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to do that or not because people are asking for us to form a federation with the Kozier Trade League and it'd be very difficult to kind of get them into a hegemony, but we'll look into it. The next vote was for should we genetically modify other species, so not human. 78% said yes, we'll make them stronger. So that's clearly a landslide vote there. Nothing contentious or close about that one. But the one I did find quite interesting was then for should we genetically modify ourselves? And it was almost the exact same vote. 77%, just 1% less, said yes, will become stronger as well. I'm just surprised. I had a feeling that the Senate was going to lean conservative on that and not wish to change ourselves. But there you go. So the votes are in. I'll be reading over the... Debates and comments in the Senate won't be displaying them in this episode here, but there was some pretty good conversation and discussion going on about what we could potentially do against the Vazarin hegemony, how we should prepare for it, and things of this nature. Some things that I did write down that I wanted to get to was a lot of people asking about the battleship that we have, and do we still have it? We do. It's It was left over here. <laughs> I don't really remember if I left it here on purpose. I feel like I did. For some reason, uh, thinking that eventually I was going to build a secondary fleet out here. But for now, it the ship class is named, well, the battleship itself is named the Augusta, and it's going to head back to its namesake system for now. Something else I'm going to be focusing on is building starbase fortresses uh, as part of an initiative under Emperor Titus the Tenth to get our defenses up and running a little bit better. So we've obtained that new technology, so I've commissioned the building of new star bases pretty much everywhere. Not new ones, sorry, but inc um, improvements and upgrades to all of our star bases. Almost all of them. Spending about six to 7,000 alloys in the process, as each one costs about 800. And that's pretty much it. Of course, it is a new week, so I just want to remind people that you can get these episodes early on Patreon, if you so wish. Uh, if you want to watch them at your leisure, on your own time. Three episodes per week go up every two days. Uh, what is it? Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Appreciate the support people give me over there and the support still that we have as we venture further into the series. You know, we're up beyond episode 20, 20 now. So we're pretty far in and uh, we still have a ravenous group of people watching and commenting and debating. I love to see it and I really do appreciate the support you guys give. So thank you. All right, so... 
Um, now that the war is over with Site 10667 override, we can't go to war with them again for a little while, and I was hoping that we could utilize their species to get alloys. But it seems I was wrong. It doesn't seem like we're getting any from them, and I don't know why. I've posed some questions to people. I was looking it up. It definitely used to be a thing that you could purge machines and get alloys. I don't know if there's a certain condition for that. Maybe you need to be a machine yourself. Maybe that's possibly what I'm confusing, but I thought that was the case. But the drill 087s, we have 80 of them. They are being dismantled and we're not getting anything for it, which is fair enough. Um, it's not that big of a deal. We had also decided to attack them so we could progress towards the galactic core because we do have a situation log uh, event for getting there. Now we could research it and just figure out what's going to happen, which I think I will do soon. Maybe not right away, but hopefully in this episode I'll get to that. And we can maybe learn a bit more about what's going on and what that opens up for us. I had thought that it might be the best idea to actually border the Galactic Core before we do that. Because I don't know, it might feed into the Vazarin hegemony. I also have the theory that they're just out here. Because there is a rogue star out here that I don't know how to get to. So it's either to do with that or it's to do with the center or there is something else going on. And maybe we just can't access them, I have no idea. Um... But apart from that, really, it's business as usual on the sectors. I've kind of gone over every planet and built a bunch of stuff. I sold some energy to get some minerals because we didn't have that much just to go through all the planets and queue things up for now. So we'll just let time play on normal. Our fleet is leaving the... or is just actually heading back here to repair. I don't plan on going to war for a little while, so we can invest in our star bases before we do any major upgrades to the ships themselves. Because, of course, we have many new ship classes now. Some people rightfully pointed out that I didn't have auto-upgrade on everything. It's interesting. A new faction has been founded called the Miners Group. Industrial Developments. Okay. Um... So new technology discovered. I didn't feel like it was there was much point in actually building up these ships or doing anything too crazy with them, like the escort carrier, which by the way, I mentioned it in my Discord, it looks awesome. Like you can actually see the the two carrier cores are here and here. And you can see like the way the ships come out of here, they come out of here and here and here. Obviously the big bright uh, purple areas, but it just looks so cool. I love just the design of actually having some come out the front, front facing, side facing, and layered on top of each other. It looks really, really just interesting, I think, and really detailed. It's really cool. So I, I just love the design of that. I just want to give it a special mention. Um, so yeah, we'll probably end up designing some sort of new kind of carrier class ship that's going to specialize in this kind of thing. I noticed as well that there's improved fighter wings for point defense, which um, I think on hovering over, it's not doing it right now, but it should tell me. It should give me a tooltip when hovering over it. Oh, there we go. Uh, so yeah, Improved Fighter Wing PD. Improved Fighters target smaller enemy vessels as well as bombers and strike craft in coordinated maneuvers. They'll stay close to its carrier to intercept. So I think it's these ones are going to stay roughly around this ship and try to intercept things. So they're like point defense. Whereas these ones will actually go out and kind of do bombing runs on enemy ships and things like that, I think. So I'll look into it a bit more in depth later. But if you know anything about the, the kind of different stuff we maybe should be building, you know, let me know in the comments. I read everything. Um, so I'll catch it up at some point. So, but for now, I don't think we need to be building anything. We're going to go into a bit of a saving our alloys economy for a while as we are building an Ecumenopolis world out at Scythia. And as well as that, uh, we want to save up those alloys and get some consumer goods flowing so we can maybe even get another megastructure going off at some sort at, uh, later in future. So that's kind of the general plan for now. Uh, we're just going to be doing things in the anomalies uh, and having a look at like reacting to things and things like that. But no proactive war for a while, at least unless we get attacked, of course, just because we can't with Site 10667. Don't necessarily want to just go to war with the Velden or Zealots or anyone else around me. Kind of want to do something a little bit more interesting and see if we can form allies like we were talking about. All right, so we're just getting... Uh, what do you call it? Point defenses, rift stabilization. Oh yeah, this is a technology. So it's been a few days since I played, as you might be able to tell. Um, but I do have a look over things right beforehand. This was to, well, let's read it. Our scientists see the possibility of reestablishing the rift that led the Vazarin fleet to our capital system. So this is pretty interesting. We might be able to find a way out to them. However, last time we researched technology belonging to the Vazarin hegemony, they attacked us with a huge fleet. So I'm going to leave that for a while until we feel like perhaps we are ready for some sort of defense or we're ready to attack. But for now, it seems too early. 
especially seeing as it is a very expensive tech. It would only take us 35 months, it's not that bad, but generally speaking, it's quite an ex it's one of the, the most expensive technologies we've ever seen in terms of research cost. So you, it, that kind of lends itself to meaning like, this is a big deal that you should be getting later on. So we'll just get some of the cheaper stuff for now and keep progressing uh, as is. I've reordered some things on some planets and things like that, but generally speaking, nothing out of the ordinary, just kind of building things up, moving some pops around. We have five unemployed specialists on Terra, um, which I'll probably end up moving somewhere, but I moved them originally, I was thinking of moving them to Elysium. There's actually no free jobs here. We need to build our alloy mega forges up a level, uh, but we're actually lacking, I think volatile moats, is it? Yeah, we might be lacking the moats to do so. So I'll probably wait to do that, and then we'll move them there. So someone died. Who was that? That was Admiral Kesula Velsius, who was on one of our patrol fleets. So our patrols have actually stopped because I was moving them around a while ago. Uh, Mamerica's Volminius. Okay. I feel like this UI has changed, hasn't it? This is definitely different. I don't remember it being a big square like that. It's kind of neat. Anyway, so this is Augusta. We're going to move our ships back to Sol. Oh, it's a left click, sorry. Oh my god. Alright, they're doing it. Alright, so they're moving back to Sol. The other patrol fleets as well. We have this one down here. This one needs to go back to Sol. It was heading the wrong way. I don't know how I queued that up wrong before. And this one is a little raider fleet. That really can start over here and then we'll queue it up later. Alright. So some ships are repairing. Doing all that. That's all good. So let's have a look around, I think, as well, for just slow, slow time down a little bit. How the... So people were talking about getting the Kozier Trade League, for instance, into a federation. And right now, they are the overlord of the Da Wenu Trade Commission, and they're in... Oh, actually, they're a federation status association with uh, the Thogan Emergence and the Valon Cluster. So, yeah, they have federation association status. They're actually all equivalent with us. They might be the, one of the only empires that is like that. Um, certainly making an ally out of them is would be nice because they're so strong, but maybe that would make things too easy. I don't know, but we do kind of ethically, I mean, we just happen to kind of align with them and then work with them early on. Uh, but yeah, so the Valen Cluster and then the Thogan Emergence are both these kind of like socialist ideals, nations that are working together in a federation and they've given association to the Kozier Trade League. So a bit of an alliance is almost forming out there in the galaxy right now. Whereas, I don't know what we could do. We could potentially do a hegemony. We'd have to actually let the Tyrone Republic go and then f try to get them back into it. And then we can try to force it on stuff like the Dacorite, the Site 1066 or the Veldenor, just those around us maybe, to have this kind of like body of vassals in a way around us. And that doesn't mean that the Kozier can't be still favorable conditions or favorable relations with us. We could still do that. All right, that's the time play. Um, we're still doing alien species procurement. We can't get that last one. There's actually a destroyed world over here that we want to go investigate so i'm going to start moving around some scientists we have one out here not doing anything i don't think so let's get him on the case septimus navius and i just have to check my scientists actually i don't know if there's any studying archaeological digs right now it doesn't seem like it and this guy is what just assisting research yeah this is our uh, tech world, Tiberium, of course. We're building an advanced materials laboratory there. That's basically like an engineering focused technology building. It's just specifically geared towards engineering tech, which is kind of nice because right now our tech is very uh, pushed towards physics. So if we can catch up the other two with that, that'd be great. Obviously, it's because of the particle accelerator that we built over at Vega. And that's giving us 150. Um, physics research. So something else I'd like to do then in regards to technology technologies is get gateway technology because we now own two gateways. So it'd be awesome if we could open open them up and learn how to build them. As well as going to be another focus, I think. Um, so yeah, again, we're just going to be try to be kind of quick with those technologies to get some of the cheaper ones. New Astain, the habitat is still there, actually. I keep forgetting about that. I guess... 
I don't know if I built a colony ship or not. Well, I suppose there's no harm in clicking to build one. So that would be an orbitable habitat that has very different buildings. A reactor district, research district, trade, and leisure. And I saw some nice comments. Unfortunately, I saw it a bit too late about maybe turning this into a resort world. Which is actually a really cool just concept in general. Excuse me, in general. Uh, focusing it for trade and leisure. I think that would be a pretty neat idea. But we already have one. So, But we're going to colonize it and see maybe what we can make out of it. Nova Arabia. Interesting name. Alright, we'll just leave it like that for now. It's just going to be a colony anyway. For a bit. So over at Alexandria... The focus that I have for this planet, this is our resort world. What I plan on doing is, we can't build any districts. So what we have to do then is... Actually, that's a really interesting point about the orbital habitat. If you can't build districts on that, it must be a real pain to figure out. But anyway, uh, we've got a senate house. We want to build luxury housing for these guys to be able to grow a bit faster. And then start to get stuff like a slave processing facility. So that we can build a neo Colosseum, And that would be a very big... I guess, tourist attraction within the Empire. And our worlds right now are doing amazing. We're at 82% stability on this world. I think on Terra it's like 97, despite the devastation. Obviously it is our capital as well, so it's got a little bit of extra favor in there. System surveyed. And we're still surveying systems. So I'm gonna just close the sectors thing for now and keep an eye on our civilian ships. New technology yeah, I get the Daemon is still researching things out this way. In this nebula. This place must look very nice, I would imagine. Certainly very cloudy, anyway. Our ships go pretty fast now across systems. Love to see it. And that is because of the level 3s, is it? Yeah. Level 3 plasma thrusters. Base New ship speed. 50%. Awesome. Okay, so, uh, technology research, the, f the battle cruiser, awesome. As larger and larger vessels become more combat, ca com common, sorry. Combat is taking place at longer ranges, and offensive firepower is becoming an ever more decisive factor in battle. Our naval theorists suggest building a long, powerful vessel capable of mounting large, medium, and most notably guided weapon placements to specialize in hurling as much weaponry at the enemy as possible in either mid or long range combat. And then we have policies. Fleet operations. I'm trying to scroll down here. I can't. Fleet operations doctrine. Blue sky, black sky, and anti-piracy. Well, we can check those out in the policies. That's all new to me. Uh, colossal testing facilities. Research speed 5%. That's a mega structure. Macro engineering testing stations. Yeah. Let's get it. Um, all right. So posthumous Gensius. What's he going to do next? Advanced shield capacitors. It's kind of tempting to get some of these rare technologies that pop up. As they also take a little bit of extra time. Um, and in my infinite wisdom, I've forgotten. Oh, yeah. We wanted to have a look at the battle cruisers. Holy moly, these things looking thick. They are getting really long now. <laughs> so this has five different sections to it. Holy crap. So what do we got? We have a fusillade bow, artillery bow. I keep saying bow, bow, fusillade bow. Volley artillery missile broadside barrage. So heavy on the, yeah, missiles, artillery. So we could have really big artillery ships at some point if we wanted to focus them for that. Now that we have, pro what are these proton launchers? Yeah, Jesus Christ. We'll just hurl shit at, any at people. Interesting to notice that the artillery core, I guess it doesn't consider missiles artillery, which I guess makes sense. But yeah, you could just lay these out with, oh right, that's why. These aren't artillery. Proton launchers are large weaponry. Hmm. With 130 range, and then you could set this to be artillery range 120 is the max. Stay real far back and just launch everything you have. What I would love to see in addition to this then is a ship that will stay next to it that has like bombers and fighters and carriers. That'd be really cool. So you have like a strike craft, two strike craft things on the flank of one of these or something. And that way, but you set them all to stay out. 
I mean, maybe I'm overthinking it. I wish the combat in this was a little bit deeper, maybe. But this is what the mod is aiming to do. But it would be cool to try this. So you have this one thick, big ship with massive artillery capabilities re hanging that far back. And then a couple smaller ships, which are still quite large, like carrier ships to protect it. That launch all their fighters that can do damage around it and stuff like that and protect it. That'd be so cool. So we might try that in future. New technology discovered. Um, and speaking of, we're going to start bringing our fleet back now. I keep looking in the wrong areas. I should really hotkey these. Alright, so. This is class is 1. Class is 2. And Queso's Conquerors. Can I... There we go. So I have it hotkeyed now. Alright, well, anyway, we're going to just go back to, I don't know... Send them back there for now. The farming technology is done already. Do you want to continue the deal? Absolutely. That's to get more crystals. We're actually lacking crystals right now, but I've built buildings to kind of make up for that. Uh, improved crystal farms. Admin cap. Create a penal colony. Terraforming and terraforming gases. Let's do the terraforming. We don't necessarily... Actually, you know what? We could use it now, considering that... We're getting more planets than we are uh, the cooldown for our relic. We won't be making Gaia worlds, but we could at least make some more continental worlds for us to live on. Education campaign expired. Let's run it again. And the fear campaign. Alright, cool. Looking good. Uh, we could go out here and take this system again, finally. We're really short on influence now. I actually might just test it and stop... The Xeno Reform League. We're suppressing it. So we'll stop suppressing it right now. There's going to be a bit more of a pull back to it. Because obviously, our previous Empress Appia, the third, was leaning towards it. She was in charge of the party, so she had a greater pull for other pops to join it. But now she's passed on. I guess that there isn't going to be as strong a pull, but there will definitely be a little bit more. And then we have the Miners Group now, which we'll probably have to rename. Uh, Mastery of Nature, Consumer Benefits... Adopting Mastery of Nature will appease these guys. We did that. Constructing buildings, the Ministry of Production and System, and the Capital Complex on any single planet will please them. That's good, because we're actually building that right now. On... I don't know, one of these worlds... Oh yeah, Cicero, I just built. So we, we don't have a System Capital Complex. Okay. But we did just get a Ministry production, and this is going to give you a 15% buff to Artisans. And this is basically where we make all of our consumer goods, almost all. But we're getting an Ecumenopolis, which I think we can uh, focus on that instead. Because we definitely have a huge ton of minerals that we're not using. It's interesting to see our energy go down when we actually move our fleet out now. So System Capital Complex, that's going to be the next one up. But we can't build that yet until we get to 80 pops. Now on Elysium, I think is our highest populated planet, 71. Yeah. Still can't do it, so we're just gonna have to wait a while. Alright, things are moving nicely. We are back under our Empire Sprawl. We are evened out for resources now as well, which is not too bad. Let's just close the planets for now. You know, I'm not gonna be microing everything to the max all the time. I think it's fine. That's why I just hide the sectors so you guys don't have to put up with that. <laughs> How are we tech-wise for that new megastructure? Pretty interesting to see. I don't even feel like we need it, like an extra 5%. Max minerals, 5,000. So we just have more storage and a macro engineering testing station. Oh, I'm sorry. Getting this technology gives us 5%. I actually don't know what the macro engineering testing station does. Uh, but we'll just have a look. New Once we get the technology done, it should show me. Hey, we're after getting another one. Uh, an orbital artificial ecosystem. A very large station housing a completely artificial ecosystem to study nature. Research speed 5% again. Also people mentioning for me to get arcane deciphering. Um, I want this one first, but we definitely should get that. I have passed it a few times. Yes, let's do this then. Again, increasing our research speed further. Turmoil in the galaxy, more raids. This time on the Picari League. Which is right here. That's a Vazarin fleet of 7,000. 
I am so close to that. I would love to go in there and kick their ass just to show them what's what. But we don't have um, borders with them, so they're just going to have to put up with the raid. System charted. Now, am I forgetting any dig sites? I feel like I am. I thought we had one around here somewhere. It tells me in the situation log anyway, doesn't it? The echo's inside. Go to. Here it is. Yeah, we do have one. I just completely looked over it. Uh, um, well, do we have a science ship out here? It doesn't look like it. So let's just build a science ship somewhere out here. If we can. Is there any shipyards out this way? Jesus, did I not build any? Wow. Apparently not. There's some here. Okay. And we have the wormhole tech there. So yeah, really what I'd love to do is just get those gateways figured out. And some people said get the te technological ascendancy perk and that you get a higher chance of rolling rare techs. Kind of tempted to do that. But at the same time, like I said, just a little bit fearful. I'll lock myself out of something I'd rather have later that might be more important. So I might just leave it. We seem to be going through tech so fast that I feel like eventually we'll get some of these anyway. All right. Let's do a once over on some of the planets. So Terra does have these five pops that are unfortunately unhappy right now. I can't repair this building. Not that I even really think I need to. A hyper entertainment form. We have so many amenities. I'm not sure why I'd even need that at this point. But we could change it into something else, obviously. We just need one more pop here. So maybe we'll resettle a pop from somewhere else that un has unemployment. Uh, Scythia has unemployment. Even if it's just one. And that should allow me to repair this building. I'll give some extra jobs and maybe give some room for the specialists. New technology discovered. Or if I build this up, we can move specialists here. So that's going to create... How many is this? It gives five jobs. It'll give eight. So we'll just move three specialists to Elysium just to prepare from Terra. Oh, but that'll break the buildings. Oh, yeah. So that's why they're there. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, you know what? Actually, it doesn't matter. I don't need the hyper entertainment thing. So, yeah, it doesn't ma It doesn't matter. All right, that should work out System once this complete. building is done. There's plenty of building slots here as well. We just don't actually have enough pops yet. All right, so we have the um, Colossal Testing Facilities, a macro engineering testing station. And let's just get something, queue something else up for now. Uh, we can make our own battleships, which would be nice. Or we could do citadels. Um, I think I'll go with citadels, because I, like I said, I want to focus a bit more defensive. We have plenty of different types of ships that we can't build right now anyway. All right, let's pick any construction ship and see what is it for a macro engineering site. So this is gonna produce 150 engineering tech. So that's just like the stellar um, particle accelerator, but it's just for engineering, I see. And very same kind of situation here. 5,000 alloys, a little bit of influence. Yeah, we could definitely set one of these up. I wonder, does it need to be built around a star? I'm not too sure. We'll find out, I guess. We need more alloys, though, first off. And maybe we could build it up near Vega, just to keep these all together, sort of a research site or system. How's the galactic community going as well? Oh my god, we're number one. So the only other thing I did in between sessions was I assigned our envoy to here. Previously, they were assigned to the Tyrene Republic, kind of just wasting, honestly. So now they're back on the galactic community themselves. We've only got the one envoy, but this is going to give us, our, I think, a 10% increase to our diplomatic weight or something like that. So that's set us to number one, which means if we get this through, the Senate is currently in session, but the next vote up is forming a galactic council, which will put us in charge of like greater things. I've never actually been in charge of it before. So I look forward to seeing what that's like, if it works out for us. The Senate floor is going for natural, natural sanctuaries, which is going to hurt diplomatic weight from economy and we're opposing it right now it's got 500 days to go i will try my best to not ignore this because i'll probably call in the weight of the kosher trade league to get rid of it in fact um 
if you could just stop doing what you're doing, we'll get our influence back. We're making six influence now. Research project concluded. Apocalypse. After studying what remains of this world, Chief Scientist Septimus Navius and his colleagues came to a worrying conclusion. Given all available information, the current state of jo Dojak 3 is that a cataclysmic is that of cataclysmic orbital orbital and bombardment. God, I can't speak. In the vicinity of this side, traces of super heavy elements unique to Vazarin technology can be found. It appears they've made an example of those living here. No traces of the civilization presumed uh, to have formerly lived in this world can even be found. Wow. All right, so that's terrifying. See, that's terrifying for a few reasons. But number one, they obviously possess super weapon weapons, right? Capabilities. They have super weapons. The thing I'd be afraid of is a planetary shield ain't going to stop that, you know? And speaking of, actually, we have stuff here to get that I haven't got yet. Uh, same in this system, actually. So let's go grab that. But yeah, that's that's just pretty worrying from a what could happen, you know? It's like, oh, we saw fleets of like ten thousand, you know, about seven or eight thousand. It's like, oh, these are pretty strong. These are pretty strong. But then we caught up to it, and it's like, okay, this isn't so bad. And then they like did that, t like. 20 fold, you know, not even 10 fold, but like 20 fold coming through with 140,000. So it's like, okay, that ramped up quick. And then what's next? You know, colossal titans and stuff to come through millions of fleet power? I have no idea. I have no idea. And people have been trying to tell me, and I've been telling them I don't want to know because I much prefer not knowing. It's mm -hmm. keeps me very intrigued to mm -hmm. not know how powerful it could get. Maybe we've seen the utmost limits of their power. But the fact that they've destroyed worlds and we found out about it makes me think we have not seen their full capabilities yet. The Dagatani Kingdom are being raided. I wonder is this part of the reason, by the way, that some of the other empires are a little slow to catch up to me. In terms of fleet power, economy, and stuff like that. Is it the constant raids that they're undergoing slowing them down? Could be something to do with it. Potentially. All right, so this place needs two different buildings. It'll need <clears throat> a slave processing facility. And uh, mineral refinement. That's it. Just trying to remember. It does also need a senate house, but it's fine. So unlocks dip uh, diplomacy, forming a federation. Available envoys increased by one. Awesome. Can we assign that to the galactic communities again? Another one? 6.1. So that's going to give us much more power now. Oh yeah. Our weight is getting it's getting pretty thick. Soon we'll be able to dictate whatever we want on that galactic stage. Admiral's gain trait. I mean that's pretty huge. So we're actually tilting it now in our favor. 300 a uh, one year to go. Online. And we're almost at 5000 alloys so we can start thinking about building that Mega structure, though we do need the influence New for it as well. Discovered. All right, shield capacitors can be uh, implemented. Level five weapons, gamma lasers, or neutron launchers. Go with gamma lasers. Man, our I'm excited for our fleet power. It's gonna get thick. All right, let's do a quick once over on all these planets, if I can, just real quick. So let's go. Let's just check how many do I have. Yep, we can upgrade this if we want. We have the ruins and craters to be removed. So let's do that. Get rid of all those things. This planet is lacking amenities. Big time. I built multiple commercial zones to avoid having to upgrade them. But this time, I'm going to upgrade them. Hopefully, we can get some... Actually, I don't even think we have the... We just have the population to get on the job. That's probably where the amenities are going. So that's not really necessary, actually. All right, these are fine then. Unemployment here. It's really just the unemployment I care about. We'll try to fix unemployment where we can find it. And I'm very interested by this. Restoring Ecumenopolis. Still 2,800 days to go. It's not going to happen for a while. And then we'll give this a new name, the Relic World. Scythia was kind of a cool name for it, though. Maybe they're a relic of our timeline. Um, okay, so we've hit max food. I did build some resource silos on some, some planets as well to increase it a bit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's see if we can lend a hand to anybody. Perhaps the Kozier Trade League would like some food? 
Just as a show of goodwill. Offer a trade deal. Happy to give them food. They really don't care, so I'm not going to bother. Whereas the Tyrian Republic, again, just to keep them happy, keep them favorable with us. Look at this. They couldn't be happier. There you go. 5,000 food. Now, here's the thing. If we want to do a federation, it requires excellent relations. Or an envoy sent to improve relations. Just to even do it. But I believe it's... Okay, well, we could do that in a moment. I'll wait for this vote to pass. But I'm, I believe it's going to say they can't be a vassal of someone already. So we'll have to, like, release them. And then attempt to get them as a vassal. If they refuse, we might have to go to war to force them in. I, I think you can do that as a hegemony. I say hegemony, by the way. I don't know if it's hegemony. This is like a debate on a video I did before. When I went to ParadoxCon, of which I wasn't invited, I just had to go. Or I was invited, then uninvited, and then went anyway. Daniel Mordegard, the game director, called it a hegemony. But I, I think it's hegemony. <laughs> but I don't know anymore. Let me know what you think. Uh, orbital artificial ecosystem. So I'm also interested about this type of megastructure too. Economic doctrine planned. I'll have to go through all these different things as well. We've gotten all these policies now. Potentially. So yeah, let's get this one. Let's get fleet command limit increase. It's only 6,000. It's quite cheap. A new relic activation is available. It's too expensive though. Our influence, while it's climbing really high, we spent so much on claims. I can't really be spending it just to convert into the world right now. Yeah. I don't even know where I'd go. One of the Tundra worlds, probably. Alright, let's double check. 280 days to go. It is tilting in their favor slightly. But not by much. We want to put this down because essentially, while the pop consumer goods reduction is nice, the diplomatic weight from economy being, economy being hurt so much does not benefit us. I can't imagine it really benefits anyone, but it definitely doesn't benefit us. Alright, so we have the appropriate amount. Let's see what that other... So we have the orbital ecosystem site. This produces 150 societies. So they're basically really, really similar, right? They're all specialized to one different type of um, technology, either bio-research, engineering research, or physics research. Society, I guess. Um, so yeah, the question is, which one do we go with? I, I think I'll probably go with whatever's lowest first. So society is lowest, so I'll go with that. Only by a small amount, but I'll, I'll do that first. Although I feel like a lot of megastructures are probably in engineering. So maybe we'll do engineering first, actually. Alright, let's have a look. Engineering test site. So this can be built on just random planets. Alright, so we'll head out here. Build it in the Vega system. Again, gonna wait for the influence to see how this kind of goes 200 days to go this is going to be fluctuating a little bit every now and then while people jump in jump out Establishing colony. we're currently winning now but it is fluctuating so you got to really keep an eye on it all right let's close that down we don't need to see those planets science ship out here not doing anything just do some auto exploration for now then please there's nothing for this person to do. Uh, my game is froze, I think. Nope, we're okay. The Orphan Gate. Our remote tracking has detected a surge of activity in the Revac system. It appears the Orphan Gate has been activated. It seems that the Traxian Empire has been contacted by a star empire from the other side, who requested that they cede some of their territory as they had prior claim to it. The negotiations have broken down, and the two nations are now in a state of war. Holy shit. We looked at this quite a long time ago, and I said I've never seen one of these before. I have no idea what it is. And here we see that it's totally active. And something is going to come through. 
And can we see in here? I don't think so, right? This is Fog of War, but they still own it. Traxian Empire still own it. We might see if I get into a power, uh, position of galactic importance on the galactic community and make the council, I think I'll be levying something forward to say we need to come together, stop fighting each other, and fight a common enemy. Because we are getting invaded all over the place from things that we don't know anything about. Just double checking these notices. Nothing, I think, worth bringing up necessarily. The Sadrel Exiles. Equivalent. Who are you? Wow, that's close to the sun. Oh, shit! So this must be them. So this is a whole new thing. <laughs> this is crazy. I've never seen these before. This is so cool. This is so cool. All right, they're equivalent. That's what I like to see. Now, we don't know anything about them. Ah, the human zealots. If you have come to convert the Sadril exiles to your despicable religion, I shall terminate... Damn, I didn't get to see the rest of it. Terminate you? Something like that, I imagine? We can demand that they become our tribute. Demand vassalization. They're willing to accept... That seems totally wrong. Also, it says acceptance, distance, seven, four, you know, seven million or whatever. I think that's supposed to be really negative, but it's gone so negative, it's wrapped around and gone into the positive. So I think that's probably why. It's the same with federations and stuff like that. Well, I'm not going to cheese it. Although, yeah, I feel like this is none of that's supposed to be the way it is. But maybe once they open the gate, maybe then it, things change and they'll figure out an actual route. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen if they do take territory here. Yeah, man, the Orphan Gate just leads right to them. I mean, they're getting deals all over the place, though. Really weird. Hegemonic imperialists. They're libertarian, militarist, and materialist. Continental preference, cybernetic, thrifty, natural engineers, quick learners, weak and slow breeders. They live on desert worlds, it seems. They have equivalent fleet to us, and they have equivalent tech, uh, tech was it? But a pathetic economy. Hmm. I'll wait to see. I'll wait to see. We don't know anything about them. New technology discovered. But I feel like there's an issue with the path not being drawn to them, so everyone's agreeing to do stuff with them. <laughs> Which is a kind of strange thing. Now, what tech did we just get? The fleet command limit, okay. So they're exiles, kicked out of the galaxy maybe for some reason. We'll have to find out. You're just getting tons of events with everybody now. How's the thing going? 90 days. Online. We are winning pretty handedly now. Even the Kozier Trade League has stepped out. Maybe they don't. They see which way it's going. They don't want to oppose us directly. I'd love to see it. Citadels have been unlocked. Impulse thrusters. This is going to be our next level, I think, for speed. I think so anyway. So let's get that. Three months to go on the gamma lasers. Man, our tech is so fast. Can't even keep up with it. Our construction ship has arrived, so we can start thinking about building that thing now. 40 days to go. I just need to keep an eye on this now for the next month just to make sure uh, it's going to go our way. 30 days to go. One month to go. Looks like it's going to get turned down, which is perfect. The natural sanctuaries. We should preserve natural spaces, spaces as parks. Nah, we don't need to do that. Seven days to go. Rejected. Okay, so we didn't need to spend any influence, which is perfect, which means we can straight away get building our macro engineering site. And it looks like it's, again, building a bit off, but it seems like when it finishes, it just corrects to being on the right spot. So hopefully it'll work out, no problem. New technology discovered. It's apparently something to do with the real space scaling. I'm actually not using real space scaling, so that might be, again, causing, causing further confusion. 
All right, things are going pretty well. Um, let's see, plasma accelerators, let's go. Now, I have to go through, another thing I have to go through now is the star bases, right? They've all upgraded. So we have this one, Iltuya or whatever it's called, Ilya. Gonna rename it to Opsius. And by the way, some people were asking, did I change his name from Ospius to Opsius? His name was Opsius. But I was saying it wrong for the first couple episodes. And then when I looked to name it, this system after him, I saw that we were saying it wrong all along. The Opsius station. So this is our big, thick military station that we want to protect. Um, and it looks good. I mean, 18,000 fleet power. And look at this. This thing is chonky. Is that, that's not our style of shipyard, is it? Maybe it's the style from when we took it over? Yeah, because we have machine ships, ship set. But that one's like the, the Nerilga Swarm, but we've just upgraded it. So it's like a hive mind one. It's kind of cool, though, just to have, even have different ones. We're like building into their architecture. So I have a hangar bay here as well, actually. But we're just going to add out the um, missile and gun batteries as usual. Extra buildings we can maybe do something unique with. A crew quarters, we have one already. It'd be nice to just chill here. Communication jammer. Um. A dry dock. Oh, by the way, I also built... I don't know if I built it here, did I? Oh, maybe I did get it, got rid of it or something. I thought I built a war memorial. So a pretty cool building that you can build is a war memorial... Building already built on this starbase? Oh, this is the war memorial. I did build it. Sorry, I just thought it was the crew quarters. Sorry, it doubles up the images, I think. That actually looks like an anchorage. Yeah, my bad. So anyway, a war memorial. Of course, General Opsius, or Admiral Opsius, I guess, uh, who was the commander that basically rushed out, did some damage, the debris is still there, he rushed out, pinned the Norilga Swarm's fleet down, while the rest of the fleet could then catch up. You know, he's remembered here for his valiant efforts. And as such, there is a war memorial on the ship station, which is named after him. And what that does is basically producing some unity, uh, is that it? Galactic ambition is negative 20. I'm confused. That's like the cost. <laughs> Produces unity. Spiritualist ethics, 10%. Yes. And then it says, ruler skill and fear campaign is increased. So our fear, fear campaign is even better because of that? I'm a bit confused what that means. Maybe that was talking about the costs being reduced. I'm so not good at reading... Tooltips, it's insane. This increases monthly unity 10%. Oh, yeah, 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 I get it. I got it. I thought it did something else, but anyway. Anyway, a great deal of blood was shed for this system. It would be disrespectful to let this tragedy disappear from memory. The other cool thing you can build is like a um, disposal center to get rid of the starship wrecks. So if you don't have a war memorial, you can build this instead and it clears out the debris and you get stuff for that. I don't know. I just think it's kind of cool buildings. I, I'm going to be honest. I've read this now like five times. I've just stopped and read it right now and I still don't quite even get it. But if it produces unity, then fair enough. That's cool. That's fine. But I don't really understand everything else it's telling me there. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my brain, but there you go. That's what you're dealing with. All right. Anyway, I thought it was a pretty cool thing to build. Here is where we're going to focus more on trade getting really far-reaching trade. The off-world trading company can produce even more. Um, system agricultural terminal. Interesting. Farmer jobs. Starbase customs. Dry docks and things like that. I'll leave it for now. I'll decide what to get later. I'm going to have to look through these on myself, I think. Because for some reason, I just can't think and talk at the same time, I think. All right, let's go with more military stuff out this way. Target uplink communication jammer. That's good for now. All right, good. So we're just improving some of the star bases out there. These are building things, but I don't see it here for some reason in the outliner, which is weird. And then Dojak is built up. Yeah, things like anchorages would actually be nice for future uh, fleet power and stuff like that, I suppose. Or fleet, um, what's it called? Capacity, naval capacity. This could have a disposal center. So this is producing five 
minerals. And then also increasing anthropocentrism, I guess? Let's do that. See, tooltips like that, I'm just like, I see so much of this stuff, and I'm like, I actually roll my eyes, and I'm like, I'm not even going to read it, like, bother. But I do see 5% stability, so let's get that as well. For the planets that are in here. Although there... Is there even a planet here? There is. Oh, yeah, but this planet's been removed. So that's fine. Okay, sorry that you guys had to sit through that. Um, and I mean... Not the tooltips, I mean me reading them badly, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not too sure what to do with the scientists now. The only other place we could stick one is on Sol itself. To She's actually level 5. You know what, you can just get out of here. Bring your ship back, let's say. And then appear out here. And we'll get you to do the excavation. So this excavation is the echoes inside. Readings from Banagho 3A reveal that it was once... Mostly covered in lush vegetation. Now the uh, forlorn orb is little New more than a barren rock. Discovered. Despite lacking any noteworthy tectonic activity, sensory scans of the planet have registered puzzling seismographic data. Something is moving underground, something big. This warrants investigation. That's a little uh, uh, scary, which reminds me Leviathans. There's an Ether Drake out here, and there is. A Tianki Met Matriarch out here. I would love to try and take one of those out. So site 10667 overrides capital is having a lot of unrest. That's fine. There's 44 pops there. They're just being systematically removed and killed. We're actually growing our own robots. Maybe we could stop that. Yeah, you know what? That's fine. Just stop. Can I stop? I don't know how to stop. I thought you just right click it to stop. Guess not. Oh, I could turn off the building though. And pops are now moving here. Construction online. I don't know how to prevent that. It's only just started happening as well. Oh well, whatever. God, there's a lot I don't understand today. Advanced Weapon types. New Age Warfare. Gotta do it. Military power is, is the only universal language in the galaxy. New and improved weapons will help us cement our position on the galactic stage. I mean, lore-wise, we're obviously going to be focusing to do that because we're struggling to come up with a way to deal with the Vazarin hegemony. There's exiles appearing on the outskirts of the galaxy. We don't know really what they're all about, what kind of ships they're going to be using. And they're, in, they're at war now with the Traxian. And they're actually taking territories out of the center of them. They haven't, uh, it's not a total war CB though. It looks like they're gonna have to come to an agreement about who gets what. I wonder why they've decided to come back to the galaxy uh, now. We've or if we'll ever find that out. World. So we've landed on the ring, the orbital habitat. And the colony is established. Oh wow, okay, that was quick. So culture turns consumer goods into unity society maybe we could make it a place of worship although the fact that it's a place of artificial creation kind of makes me not want to do that trade research reactor could have it just be a, a, a an energy ring yeah support the fleet I'd be down with that let's do it for now maybe in future we'll have a mega structure or something to handle that but for now I think it's fine Crystal Forge Plating, Hyper Shields, Cyclonic Deflectors. We had that appear a few times. Gonna get the Iron Disruptor though, just anything that's cheap tech. Agatha Damon is done, I believe, researching all the way out here or finding stuff. Yeah, there's nowhere for them to go now. Um. Well, we could start getting the system back, like we said before, and this is probably the last system as far out as I'm going to expand for a long time. You know what? It's not even worth it. Two energy and two engineering is just not worth it. Believe it. But we're definitely going to get these two. Still no gateway tech, which is strange to me. Alright, we've maxed out our food yet again. 
So should we try do this hegemony thing? I think we probably should. Which means letting these guys go. So now that this is passed, we can assign our envoy here. Metius Menatius. And with him here, it says they must be independent. So let's release the Tyrene Republic. We decided to release you. You're only holding us back. Now, form a federation. They still want to, which is good. A hegemony. Federations of this type are most often built around one powerful empire surrounded by lesser satellite states. Yes, that's exactly what I want. What is this? We can give them favors, is it? A martial alliance. Members of this federation seek to close their ranks around the ideals of camaraderie, martial prowess, and military cooperation. Member modifiers. Ship starting experience is increased. What's this? Members cannot freely leave the federation. Yeah, I'm going to do this one. It just seems to make the most sense, even though martial is kind of like what I'd like. Um, we'll just call it the Roman Empire. I mean, we don't need a special name for it. I don't think. Roman hegemony, maybe? Let me know if you want me to change it. I could change it in future. But to me, Roman Empire is just, they're just becoming a part of it. We're just, we just are a hegemony. Let's see what they say. Let history record that on this day, the governments of the Roman Empire and the Tyrian Republic signed a Treaty of Federation. As founding members of the Roman Empire, they will now face the future as firm allies. This grand hegemony will ensure the safety of its junior members through the enlightened leadership of its ruling hegemon. A new era of human dominance has begun. Alright, so if we wanted to, we could go into Union Mode. Is that it? Oh, that's Diplomatic Map Mode, sorry. Which one is it? This one. And if we got rid of this, let's say, so they have our colors. So do the Veldener Zealots, that's coincidence more than anything. Um, okay, so here's our Federation screen. So for those who don't know how this basically works is you need to become cohesive with each other by... It actually might be kind of tough. Oh, actually, with the Tyrene, it shouldn't be too bad. They do share a lot of our ethics, so this should be getting better, but it's not. Low fleet contribution, president decides invite members, president decides to kick members, so the very type of federation we have seems to be hurting this a lot. But we'll assign an envoy here. Can't move him. We'll take him out of the galactic community just for now. Oops, sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. From ethics, diverse ethics, opposing ethics. Really? I feel like we had a lot of the same ethics. They're xenophobic, so are we. They're materialist. We're not. That's opposing. Anthropocentrism is the same. It's not. We're not fanatic. And authoritarian's the same. They also have the same civic. I don't know if that counts. So they've got an envoy established here as well, but we're still. It's still going down. Wow, that's so rough. And that's level one. We'd have to have both our envoys here, I think. To then make it positive. Anyway, so how this works is once this bar starts going up, when we have enough envoys and the cohesion total is increasing, it'll go all the way up to 10 and then we build our XP over time. Right now we're losing XP, so if we're just over the middle bar, we gain XP. If we get to 1200 XP, we get to level 2. Level 1 gives us apparently nothing right now. But level 2 is going to give member meta modifiers resources from jobs 5. Federation president contributes to Federation fleet capacity without deducting their own. Available envoys increased. Members cannot freely leave, so that's just the standard. Further up we go, we get new members impose a 50% smaller cohesion penalty to the Federation. President gets the established hegemony war goal to force a non-Federation empire to joining the Federation. So we can fight, we can go to war with people. If we get to level 3, we can go to war with people and force them in. That's pretty cool. You can get research agreements, migration packs with no. So what we could end up doing is fighting for the Kozier Trade League, if we wanted to, to force them in. And then they would have to do what we say. So that's a potential. If we want to go full, I guess, 
kind of evil. <laughs> or at least bend the galaxy to our will. We're suffering energy now a little bit. But we'll have to just keep an eye on this. When I get my other envoy free, I can definitely assign them. But it'll take a long time to build this up then. That's just going to tick in the background though, I suppose, for a long time. We don't have to do much with it. Uh, the other thing you can do then is assign laws and stuff. I'll go through all this on my own and then talk about what I've changed. But secession power is who has the strongest diplomatic weight. That should be me, so I'm sure it's fine. Uh, secession term is a status change. Whenever another member surpasses them by 25%. Yeah, our term is indefinite, so that's fine. And then as we level it up, we get to do these different things. All right, if we wanted to. The president decides on who to invite and who to kick, so all good. All good. It's just the cohesion penalty is so bad. So the reason it's bad is because low fleet contribution. I don't know what that is, what that means. Low fleet contribution. I'll say none. We don't need to do that. Tyrian Republic don't want it, but I don't care if what they want. Can we just pass this anyway? I'm actually not sure. A failed vote will result in negative cohesion. But it's 1v1, so who gets to... Who gets to say? I really don't know. <laughs> they don't want it to happen, but I do. So, let's see what happens. Vote yes. technology discovered it failed this negatively impacted cohesion so is there somewhere which says vote weight equal oh so each vote is oh, okay damn so we would have to sweet talk the Tyrian Republic for that to happen I don't know why they would I guess it makes sense they want fleet contribution right they want the size of our naval capacity to increase their own. So I, I understand. But I just don't want to hurt capacity like that. But we can't vote again for a while. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to go through this. But it's kind of interesting, though. We're in a hedge money now. I'll have to figure that out. I mean, I played with it and I reviewed it. I do know Federations pretty well. I'm just hit with a hedge money for the first time. So it'll take me a moment to read through it again. But it shouldn't be too long. Why do we... Oh, that's afterburners. Yeah. Yeah, we could get that. And how's our construction thing going? Can't actually see it. 25% it says. Okay, 25%. New technology discovered. Um, okay, so zero point power uh, research institute. I can't believe I don't have one of those. Don't I have one of those on t on Tiberium? No, I have a central research bureau. Well, we could build that too. Just get so much research out of this place. We're currently getting it's like a giant megastructure of this planet for research. The drums of war. Now, let's change our music then. For the first time in recorded history, the warring factions of the Hazar have united under a single great Khan. This mysterious warlord, who according to some accounts is a powerful psychic, has emerged from their warrior caste and accomplished what most thought impossible. Through a combination of guile, charisma, and military genius, the new crowned great Khan has won the utter loyalty and devotion of all Hazar factions. Now they're no longer busy killing each other, the Hazar are turning their attention elsewhere. Great fleets are massing for war, crewed by eager warriors who are now steadfast comrades in arms despite having been mortal enemies mere months ago. A new threat is born. I am Duke Lore, Great Khan of the Hazar Horde, and I am here to announce that the, to the galaxy that a new age is upon us. The dark era where Hazar would senselessly butcher one another for scraps of resources or a misguided sense of honor has finally come to an end. I have solemnly promised my people a new beginning through the formation of the Great Empire that will forever enshrine the name of the Hazar species in the annals of galactic history. To those who would stand in our way, know this. I will stop at nothing to realize the true destiny of my people. If you oppose us, the Hazar Horde will grind you into dust. Strong words. Strong words indeed. All right. 
Well, we had to look at those guys before. So they were like separate tribes fighting each other, a lot of infight and stuff, infighting and stuff. But now they are their own thing, and they're going to start expanding quite rapidly. And we have a way to get down there. So they are going to be directly in conflict with us in about two system jumps. Should they have wormhole technology, which I would imagine they do. Uh, we're going to have to start moving our fleet right now around to Opsius. Luckily, we're at 23,000 uh, fleet power start uh, uh, for this star base out here. So that's at least something. But if we don't get out there with our fleet, I'd be very worried about what they're going to be mustering against this. I don't know how powerful they're going to be. Um, but we probably want to jump on them quicker. The quicker the better. You seem very articulate for Hazar. Ah uh, yes, you are perhaps referring to the somewhat crude and shall we say rustic dialect that has been used by Hazar up until now. You may not believe this, but the Hazar language was once far more developed. It is only in the last thousand years that it has gradually devolved into its current sorry state. But that changes now. Henceforth, all Hazar will be educated in the older, richer version of our language. There shall be no more shrieking. We'd like to discuss surrender. Definitely not. Terminate communications. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. It looks like the Colden Consortium have absolutely no chance with only a 3,000 star base or, uh, fleet power. So things are changing. We're in a hegemony. We've met the Sadral Exiles. The Hazar Marauders have awoken. Things are definitely heating up and the raids are ongoing. Alright, that is going to be it for today's episode. Sorry for the little bit of stuttering and being confused temporarily at some star bases, some tooltips. <laughs> And at this, I'll need to just have a quick look and uh, see what we need to do in order to manipulate uh, the Tyrene Republic and bend them to our will and just get our cohesion up so that we can then start actually leveling this thing up a bit quicker. I'm sure once we assign an envoy, I know that we're going to be fine. It'll just be really slow. I'd like to get it as fast as possible. So I'll really just need to break down this specific tooltip and try to um, alleviate any issues we're having there, you know. All right, that's going to be it for today's episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. Again, thank you for the support over on Patreon. If you want to get episodes early, you can go over there at $5 or more. Or if you're a Twitch subscriber, if Twitch is more your thing, even if you use a Twitch Prime subscri subscription. So, for instance, if you have Amazon Prime, you link it to Twitch, you subscribe to my channel, you get early access to these episodes. It's all interlinked and connected together. Do appreciate the support. So thank you guys very much, and I'll see you in the next one.